Don't ever get to a place in life where you forget what pain feels like. The reason why I want to start with this is because that's one of the main reasons why fasting consistently is very imperative. You never want to stop fasting generally and basically decide that you're going to live a life that does not insist or does not consist of fasting. Fasting is a lifestyle for a Christian. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 17, 21, this kind goes not over by prayer and fasting. So he's assuming that as a Christian, if you want to cast out devils, you have to pray and fast. He doesn't tell you exactly when or how, but he's assuming that you have a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. That's why he always departed and went to the mountains. He went to the places where he was basically secluded to fast and to pray and to seek the face of God. Now, should Christians fast only to lose weight? The answer to that question is no, they shouldn't fast just for that. But that's one of the benefits that can you can receive from fasting, basically, because the scripture says that the bodily exercise, it profits you, but godliness profits you more, basically, because it has a promise of the life now and the life to come. That's 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. And then you go on in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. It says, if we only have hope of Jesus Christ in this life alone, we are miserable more than anybody. We are of all men most miserable, meaning that our hope for Jesus Christ is not just for this life. It's for the life to come as well. So that's why it's emphasizing on the life to come and this life as well in the previous scripture, saying that when you fast or when you do the things of God, whenever you engage the things of God, when you seek the ways of God, like it says, godliness, anything that institutes or institutes of godliness is basically what will help you to see the benefits and the fruits of the blessings of this life and the life to come. That's why Jesus said that if any man re receives everything of this world or if any man denies himself of the things of this world to follow me, he will receive abundance more in this life and in the life to come. Because godliness is profitable for everything, for every lifespan or from every generation, for every timeline that you are going to be in as a human being, basically. And that's why when you fast, you want to make sure that you get to the point where fasting becomes a part of you. If you fast and basically you are still watching movies, gossiping and distracting yourself and sleeping all throughout your fast, you have not started to be in a place where you can be serious yet. You haven't become fasting yet. So you need to become fasting, meaning that fasting has to become a part of you. That's why David said in Psalm 109 verse 4, I will give myself to prayer. So you can also give yourself to fasting. You can give yourself to the word. In Acts 6 verse 4, it says that we will give ourselves to prayer and to the word. So it's possible to give yourself to these things that pertain to godliness to the point of which it becomes a part of your soul. That's what you need to get to because until that happens, you will not see much of the fruits and the benefits that fasting can really bring to your life. It takes time to bring a lot of these fruits. If you're just looking for a microwave blessings, that's different. But if you're trying to grow with God, if you're trying to grow in your physical life as well, then fasting will be beneficial if you do it consistently. I would suggest at least two times a week. And then from there, you begin to grow and you begin to do three times a week or you begin to do seven day fast, 21 day fast, and you break at 6 p.m. or you do 18 hour fast every day or something like that or 12 hour fast daily or whatever the situation is. And you can change it up. You can say for today, I'll eat fruits. Tomorrow, I will not eat anything. And the next day, I'll fast and I'll drink water. So you can decide whichever one you want to do. But make sure that you are consistent and make sure that you don't jump from point A to point 100, from point 1 to point 100. Make sure you start and you progressively increase. That's the same rule I always tell my students when I teach them the drums. I tell them that if you want to get faster on the drums, you have to start at a slow tempo. And then you practice with a metronome for a few minutes. Then after the few minutes has passed, you increase the tempo slightly. And you do the same thing over and over and over again. Before you know it, you are playing the drums at 100,000 miles an hour. So you need to do the same principle when you are fast. You need to apply the same kind of principle because you need to get to the point where even after your fast, you don't seek to eat the same amount of food that you would have eaten if you did not fast. The amount of food you eat should not be commensurate with what you would have eaten if you chose not to fast because that ruins the purpose of the fasting when it comes to your physical body. But when it comes to your mind, you will still grow from the fasting. But fasting is not just about the mind because your spirit dwells in your understanding, which is your mind. So if your mind is willing and your flesh is weak, you can still fall into temptation. That's why Jesus Christ said in Matthew 26 verse 41, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So your flesh has to be willing also. And the way you beat your flesh and put it into subjection, like Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 27, is by making sure that after you fast, you don't seek to eat three meals or two meals, but you just look for maybe one meal and a few snacks and you call it a day. 
If you can do that, you will get to the point where you just look for one meal and no snacks. And then you get to the point where you can fast and you can eat something so small. You can eat maybe just a sandwich. And after that, you're done for the day. So that's how you have to get to the point of fasting to the point of basically becoming fasting. That's how you become a person of fasting. And that's what's going to help you to even lose weight if you choose to do it for those purposes. So losing weight is one of the benefits of fasting, but that should never be the main focus. But you should always ask God, how can I do this? How can I do that? So he can show you how godliness would affect whichever part of your life you're seeking him for. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. When you forget what pain feels like, you lose passion and burden for the things of God and your compassion reduces because you don't know how to empathize anymore because you feel like life is so comfortable for you and you can't relate with it because a lot of things in life cannot be told. They have to be experienced. That's why when you purposely choose to fast, you are putting yourself under burdens. You are becoming like Issachar, basically the tribe that was looking for burdens in the land and they couldn't find any, but they bowed down and they found the burden in the spirit realm. That should be Genesis chapter 49, verse 14. So basically, when you are a man or a woman of fasting, then what it does to your soul and to your body and to your whole entire being is it, it reminds you of what pain feels like. And when you are reminded of what it feels like, then you can consistently understand that the king's business must be done in a haste. That's what David was basically saying in the scripture in the book of 1 Samuel or 2 Samuel, I believe. So basically, it said that the king's business must be done in a haste. And also, when Nehemiah was basically doing his job as a cupbearer in the book of nehemiah chapter one and two what he did is that once he found out that the remnants that were escaped out of captivity were still in reproach in the land of judah and jerusalem he made sure that he asked the lord basically how he can go back and fix it because the gates were burnt with fire and the walls were broken so it was an urgent matter so once the king that he was serving saw that his face was not basically happy he wasn't in a happy mood he didn't have a happy countenance then the king asked him what's going on and he told the king he told him that can you give me some time to go and fix what's going on he didn't tell the king that can i stay for a few months and then go back after a few months no he said i want to go now to fix what's going on in jerusalem and, and where the, the walls were broken down and the gates were broken down as well so that is the urgency aspect and you won't have urgency unless you have a burden and you won't have a burden for the kingdom of God if you don't have the compassionate mindset. If you don't feel for God, if you don't feel for what's going on in the world, if you don't feel for all the souls that are lost and confused and depressed and oppressed by the enemy, you won't basically have any kind of burden for the kingdom of God. And when you fast consistently and diligently, then you remind yourself of what pain feels like. And when that is the case, your mind is not thinking about the pleasurable things that the world has, but only the pleasurable things that God has in the right and the due time. So basically, that's what happens when you fast and it makes you to become somebody that can endure pain and suffering. You become a person that can have the fruit of long suffering. Long suffering doesn't just come from going through terrible situations. When you fast, God will see that and he will basically use that as the proof that you can endure long suffering at times and then he can bless you with things that other people will struggle to have because he knows you will not let it overcome you. you will not let it get to your head if god sees that a thousand dollars will not overcome you he will give you a thousand dollars if he sees that a mansion will not overcome you he will give you that mansion if he sees that having a wife or a husband at a certain time or age will not make you lose the burden for god he will let you have that thing because he knows that you can be trusted and the way you show god that you can be trusted experientially is basically by doing the things that will cause you to have a burden for god and fasting is one of those things. When you engage fasting, then you remind your soul, your spirit, and your body that food, it's more about strength. It's not about pleasure. You remind yourself that you're not on earth just to have fun, but you're on earth to establish the government of the kingdom of God. And you remind your whole entire being that you have control as long as you are led by the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.